So what I would tell someone who is in a rough situation that it seems like there's no way out, the first thing I would say is there is always a way out. Where there's a will, there is a way. As long as you have breath in your body, you can make it through any situation and any tragedy. As even though some things are very hard and you may feel like, you know, you, you, you can't make it. It's almost like being in a race and you see the finish line, um, but you're so tired, like you're cramping and you're exhausted and just feel like you can't make it. You just have to find that inner strength to keep pushing and keep, you know, going. Um, I never thought that, you, although I, this is what I wanted for myself to, to do better and to be better. At the time, going through those things, going through those trials and tribulations, going through those tragedies, having lost so many people along the way where there were days that I thought I just can't get off the bed. Um, there were days that every time I, when I opened my eyes, it's like, I'm still here. God, like, why? Um, but I, you know, held God closer became more spiritual and just believing and trusting that things will get better. Also, you know, realizing that there is someone who has it worse than you. There is always someone who has it worse than you. There are some people that wake up and their whole family is gone. There are some people that wake up and they've lost everything. And people find a way to make it. You know, um, as the saying goes, God doesn't give you more than what you can handle. And I know that at, at the, when you're in that situation, it seems like, well, he made a mistake on me because I can't handle this. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new beginning. Every day is a new chance to change something, to gain something, you know? And so I just really, you know, try to focus on that. And I would say to the person to focus on that and just believe you know and don't give up you know there have been people that have given up and right when they gave up the door was about to open it's like having your hand on that doorknob and all you have to do is turn it you know you have to find a strength to turn it and so um every day it gets better um, every day it gets a little easier, you know, so um, just don't ever give up, you know, a failure is a person who never tries. So my name is Sharice Kitt and I am from Harlem, New York. I currently live in New Jersey in Plainfield. I am a court reporter in the New York State Court System in the Civil Division at 60 Center Street. I have been a reporter for almost 29 years. Life for me growing up in Harlem, which is in the 1970s, was um, very hard. My family was poor. I came from a single parent home, which was my mother. My mother at that time had five children. My mother was 16 years old when she had me. So we were on what they call public assistance back then. Um, at some point in my childhood, we moved to the projects, Jackie Robinson projects um, at the age of 12. So I grew up in an era where they had, you know, drugs. Um, early on in my life, there was a big heroin era. And then about the 1980s, uh, the crack pandemic hit. So I grew up around drugs. My father was on drugs all of my life. And so he was not really present in my life. I knew of him, I knew him, um, but because he was on drugs, um, he wasn't a father um, to me, basically. The person who inspired me to be a court reporter was actually my mother. I had no idea what a court reporter was. I had never heard of a court reporter or a stenographer. After I had my son, at, um, there was a college that I decided to go to 
that you can attend. And if you receive 24 credits, you got your D GED without actually having to take the test. So in my mind, I was thinking I would go to the college and get my GED. And I was about 18 at the time. And my mother came home one day and she said, oh, you know, I think I know something that you would be good at. And she said, you know, because you're so nosy, you like to know everything um, and you type really fast. Because My mother taught me how to type at like the age of eight or nine. Um, so she thought that it would be a good idea for me to do something like that. And she said how they had, you know, were making so much money because at the time she worked in the DA's office with court reporters. She was not a court reporter, but she worked with them. And I asked her, well, what is a court reporter? And she's like, oh, it's a little lady that sits in a courtroom and she takes down everything on this machine that has these dots um, and she transcribes it. So I thought that it was interesting. So she came home the next day and she was like, oh, you know, I talked to the court reporters and they said, come down, come talk to them. So I went to, you know, to her job that next day and I talked to the court reporters and they were like, yeah, you know, you could do it, you know, blah, 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 you know, but what it, what it entailed. And they said, the school is right down the street. Why don't you go to the school and visit? So it was just a few blocks away and they were having an open house like the next week or something like that. So I went back to the open house and oh my God, I fell in love. It felt so natural being on the machine. And that September of 1990, I enrolled in the school and haven't looked back since. One of those rough times in my childhood, um, basically, well, first of all, I'm the oldest, the oldest of six now. Um, my youngest brother didn't come along until I was about 16 years old. So uh, growing up at that time, having to look after my brothers and sisters, help my mom, you know, with cooking and chores and, you know, taking care of them. I, although, you know, much younger, I think I, I more enjoyed it. But as I got older, realizing that that was a lot of responsibility put on me, um, I always felt like I didn't have much of a childhood because of it because I kind of had to grow up kind of fast. My mother had me cooking at the age of five, grow meals, uh, full course meals, basically. And I was changing diapers and making formula and feeding, you know, things like that. So um, it was hard. And I remember, you know, making certain declarations to myself growing up, how I wanted more. Um, that this wasn't going to be my life, that I didn't want to live in the projects. Um, I didn't want to be as poor as I was. You know, I wanted more in life. And so I strived, you know, um, once I became an adult and knowing that I wanted more for myself. And that's exactly what I did.